was awesome. It's so nice living in a city with great water resources like Barton Springs and the Colorado River. The water here always tastes great, especially after a long ride. Did you know that our drinking water comes from this river? I didn't know that. I thought it wasn't safe to drink the water from the river. Well, you shouldn't drink it directly from the river. Our drinking water goes through a treatment process to remove the contaminants before it comes out of our faucets. I did a research project about our water and found out that Austin has won awards for having some of the best tasting and cleanest water in the country. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know that. What a great river. We should go check it out. I can't believe someone would throw trash into the river. Some people don't realize that litter on land can end up in the water. That can be harmful for both humans and the wildlife. I like to investigate what we can do to help keep our water clean, but I don't know where to start. I think a good way to begin is by understanding that a watershed includes the entire area of land that drains to a common body of water, like a creek or river. Take Barden Creek, for example. Barden Creek watershed includes the entire area of land that drains to Barden Creek. When it rains, gravity takes water from the higher elevations to lower elevations. Since gravity pulls water downhill, a watershed's boundary is defined by high points, such as hills. Watersheds can join together to form larger watersheds. Most of watersheds in Austin flow into the Colorado River. In addition to watersheds being named after the creek they flow into, they are also part of the larger Colorado River watershed. In fact, the Colorado River watershed extends across Texas from New Mexico to the Gulf of Mexico. Is all land a watershed? Yes, all land is a watershed. So every home, every school, and every business is on a watershed. When it rains, water flows down streets and into streams, which end up in the river. As the water flows across the land, it can pick up litter and pollutants, which can contaminate the water. Chemicals that some people put in their yards and in gardens end up in storm drains that flow straight into our creeks. How does that happen? And what do you mean by chemicals? My parents just put down stuff in the ground to keep the grass green. That fertilizer they use and other things like weed and bug killers dissolve when it rains. And where does it end up? straight down the storm drain. That water that goes into a storm drain doesn't get cleaned up? Nope, it goes straight into our creeks along with all the other pollutants and trash it picks up along the way. Hey, can I see the map of Barton Creek Watershed again? Sure. What are these lines that go across the watershed? Oh, that shows the Edwards Aquifer Recharge Zone. So what's an aquifer? An aquifer is an underground layer of rock that holds water. The Edwards Aquifer in Austin is made of limestone that has lots of holes in it. I saw a big green sign saying now entering the Edwards Aquifer Recharge Zone, but I didn't know what it meant. Water enters the aquifer in the recharge zone, an area of land that has lots of openings on the surface like faults, caves, and sinkholes. Water travels very quickly through our aquifer and comes out at springs like Barton Springs. Wouldn't it be cool if we could drink to the size of a drop of water and travel through the Edwards Aquifer from the recharge zone to Barton Springs? All this talk about Barton Springs makes me really want to go. Yeah, we yeah, should totally yeah. go. That's a good idea. Let's go! Let's go. in the rock to the right of the lifeguard stand? That's the fault where the groundwater comes out to the surface of Barton Springs. Also, there's an underwater cave that the water flows through and comes out to the surface of Barton Springs. Barton Springs provides habitat for wildlife, including endangered species like the Austin Blind Salamander and the Barton Springs Salamander. I got to see the Barton Springs Salamander when I went to the Splash exhibit. They breathe underwater using things called gills. That's right, and they can also breathe through their skin. The salamanders are very sensitive to pollution. 
It's important to remember how our actions can affect their habitat. I've never seen a salamander. You want to go check one out at the splash exhibit? Yeah, sure, let's go. and people are working together to help protect our watershed, creeks, and aquifer. When we get older, we'll be voting as residents and business leaders, and it'll be our duty to protect Austin's water quality. I'm going to help keep the water clean by picking up after my dog. I'm going to become a scientist who studies water quality in salamanders. I'm going to become an engineer who discovers ways to treat storm water before it enters our creeks and rivers. Let's teach others about water quality and what we can do to help it. It's our future. How are you going to help? There are lots of things that you can do to help keep our water clean. You can prevent litter by reducing, reusing, recycling, and making sure that trash goes where it belongs. Pick up litter that you see on the ground or in the water. Each year, city staff and volunteers pull 250 tons of trash from Lady Bird Lake. If you own a dog or a cat, you can scoop the poop to prevent your pet's waste from polluting the water. You can also help protect the water by not adding chemicals into your yard or garden. Use compost instead of fertilizer. Pick weeds instead of using herbicide. And find organic ways to take care of pest problems. It looks like a mayfly. Preventing pollution from occurring is the smartest, most cost-effective way to protect the quality of our water for our health our recreational enjoyment, and wildlife habitat. It's up to all of us to help protect our water resources. By working together, we'll all be able to enjoy the wonderful water that makes Austin special. Mm -hmm.